Mm. <laughs> You're gonna make me hulk out. Hey guys, Isabel here. Welcome back to Railden. So today with me is my friend Connor, and we will be doing another Dyad Discuss video. This time on the first three episodes of Marvel's newest Disney Plus series, She-Hulk. And what a series it is turning out to be. A lot of a lot of mixed reviews on it. Personally, I find it positive. Uh, I don't think you'll find much hate from me here. So if you're here to think that I'm going to hate on it, you might as well leave now because I'm not. <laughs> I would probably say it's a bit of like an innovative show. And that being said, while also talking about the plot, I will be mentioning some of the uh, seriousness and the issues that the series brings up. So uh, be prepared to hear some of that from us as well. So I am glad they started off the first episode with Jen's story as how she became She-Hulk because originally they were going to have that story be in the eighth episode. I don't, I don't know if you knew that. I didn't. Okay. I so, don't know a lot about the production of this at all, really. So I'm glad that they started off. I think it was also good to start off, you know, the um, the difference between Jen Walters and Bruce Banner as their respective uh, hulks. One big thing about this show and, and a lot of the uh, tension around it is like people are just mad about a woman existing, <laughs> about women existing. <laughs> and, Pretty much, and their issues. <laughs> and their issues and sharing their experiences. Mm -hmm. um, it boggles my mind a little bit and I know that this show isn't just like, you know, oh, women go through all this stuff, um, but it does talk about it. So when I do see it, I'm going to talk about it. Um, and I do kind of like that they started off really quickly. Actually, in my opinion, they sort of, I think, had most of them in the first two episodes. So it kind of like it states it, you know about it, and then the show moves on. So that's what I like. I'm going to try and explain what I think these messages in the show mean. And Connor, you can, of course, jump in if you have anything to add to what I say. So <laughs> I literally, I wrote so much down from rewatching this series. Okay. What are your thoughts on the fact that people think the Hulk is like weaker than She-Hulk? Because I personally don't think that's correct. Because that's so one of the issues that like, Smart Hulk was like so much weaker and, and She-Hulk was like so strong right off the bat. Yeah, you're comparing two different fruits here. So <laughs> I don't really find that to be like a valid argument when, when people are like, oh, I think A is stronger. Like, first of all, they <laughs> really, they make the point when they're doing the little training montage mm -hmm. and they're throwing the boulders and they're throwing the rocks and he tosses it to show her like what to do she throws it a little further and she's like impressed with herself she's like yeah <laughs> and then he gets upset and he like chucks it at like a moon probably yeah some far off planet's uh, gonna get destroyed because the meteor is coming towards it <laughs> yeah first of all that is kind of evidence to the contrary for those who are using it you know as a weapon but mm -hmm. it's again you're comparing two completely different people right. um two completely different beings in a way yeah so if you want to kind of consider this version of hulk being weaker than anything if you're going to compare apples to apples you compare professor hulk with the hulk that we saw in like 2006 <laughs> or even even the one from the avengers mm -hmm. that makes a little bit more sense to compare but i i don't I think when, when people try to do that, you're just trying to dismiss and diminish whatever ability that Jen already has mm -hmm. because she is a Hulk and she's able to control her Hulk. That doesn't necessarily mean that she's automatically going to be physically stronger than Bruce Banner as the Hulk. Mm -hmm. Also, sense. yeah, it, I, I think it does. But two points to, to bounce off of what you just said. One... Okay, we see in this episode two, Hulk is going off on the Sakaar ship. So his storyline is not over. And there's theories about, you know, World War Hulk, who was like the name just insinuates that that is a powerful Hulk. So his Bruce Banner storyline 
isn't done yet. So I think people just need to be patient. Like, I think, I think MCU fans are very bad at being patient. My second <laughs> thing to bounce off of that is there was a line that Bruce said to Jen when they're trying to figure out, you know, how she can control her Hulk is that the Hulk, the baseline like trigger is anger and fear. And Jen responds with, oh, so basically just being a woman. So if you needed proof that she could and can handle her Hulk, you have it. It's right there. And as a woman, I agree with Jen. Because sometimes, you know, at night, if you're walking by yourself and you see a stranger, yeah, sometimes you do cross down the street. And that stranger might be totally harmless, but you're taught from a young age to protect yourself. There's that whole scene in, at the end of episode three, because like regardless of, of whether they're part uh, of the, the um, I forget what they're called in the comics. Oh, uh, the, the Wrecking Crew? Yeah, the, the Wrecking Crew. Mm-hmm. Um, regardless of that, like the first thing that you see are just like men that are closing it and back, boxing her in mm-hmm. like behind her apartment. But like, that's- That happens to people. Yeah. Also when Jen was cornered outside the bar, you know? Yeah. That happens often. Yeah. And they're like catcalling it. They're trying to like get her to come over and like do something. And she's like, yeah, no, I'm good. And they're like, oh, what's wrong? Oh, why don't you smile more? And she's like (laughs) walking away and they start to approach her, like all of them in a group. So it's, it's not even just one person. It's not even just one man that is bigger probably Mm -hmm. physically stronger and a hell of a lot scarier it's it's a whole group um so the fact that she's able to uh hulk out and kind of defend herself you know for the character it's kind of a nice thing so also in episode one we did have that training montage so i want to talk about the cgi and the vfx i know people are hemming and hawing about it it doesn't bother me as much as I think it does other people. Could it look better? Probably. You could argue that with many of the MCU projects, but, and I said this, and I said this in my reaction, you know, the whole scandal that they're overworking them, you know, I'm not really going to blame anyone for horrible uh, VFX. Um, But you found, I think. I did a little bit of research. Yeah, some some statistics. (laughs) Yeah, like the budget for this show is so ridiculously low compared mm-hmm. to the rest of them. Right. like literally every other show per episode like if you were to break it down like per episode is like in the tens of millions of dollars wandavision i think i saw it was somewhere between 20 and 25 million dollars per episode the show looks amazing mm-hmm. like the production value the writing everything about it the, the score everything about it is amazing you know you didn't have people complaining about cgi or whatever mm-hmm. um but that's also because it, it got treated so much better in terms of development. This show, I don't entirely know if, you know, Marvel was fully like ready, if you know what I mean? Like they, they weren't like, yeah, let's do this. They were like, I don't know, let's test the water. Let's have, you know, a smaller budget, which mm-hmm. can be problematic on a whole bunch of different fronts. One being you don't have the actual budget to animate something that is going to look to people's expectations. Mm -hmm. And then because you don't have the budget, but you're trying to make it work anyway, you're trying to get people to work as much as they possibly can on like impossible deadlines. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of doesn't look all that great. (laughs) But the other problem with it not looking great is the fact that this show is appearing to be so uh, polarizing so uh sensitive to you know all the fanboys out there (laughs) so it just kind of gives fuel to the fire it can just be a little bit frustrating if you know what I mean yeah they use that as like an excuse Mm -hmm. or or another another call for the fire to be like oh the show is terrible it's it's actually not there's is it my favorite no (laughs) am I the target audience not really i'm still enjoying it i see what it's trying to do it really doesn't take itself that seriously mm-hmm. um and it's and not it's, supposed yeah to. it's not supposed to yeah it's not supposed to and for all the 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 lower freaks out there it was the same thing in the comics the comics didn't take 
uh, themselves as seriously either. There's literally that infamous issue of her breaking out of her front page, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Like, literally the cover is like a blank thing and it's her like ripping through it, literally ripping through the fourth wall. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think people just need to chill. <laughs> For people who don't like the show, do not read the She-Hulk comics because you'll just get even more heated. Like- <laughs> like it's not for you and like I did say this in my reaction videos the comics of She-Hulk were made sort of to make fun of like females uh heroes getting like over sexualized and so to bring that vibe from that from the comics and putting it in the show I personally think is amazing and I'm loving it I love I love seeing it um like these aren't new developments yeah. people act all the time whenever they see anything that's like representative of female characters that isn't something that's like overly sexualized. so like we had a, a conversation about this and I think I was a little confusing the way I was wording it but like the, the treatment and the representation of characters like Black Widow in phase one mm-hmm. is god awful compared to where you know she ended up because mm-hmm. literally every well every costume the zipper you know, just let me just zip it lower. you know <laughs> it's it's literally like something i've seen out of a porno every she's like the butt of the joke uh when it comes to you know talking about her body or making some sort of sly remark about her body do we really have to bring up the scene in avengers 2 the beginning scene that the where uh was it they're fighting vision or whatever or no 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 um when the first Ultron bot comes out oh. and Joss Whedon has Bruce Banner fall into her tits. Yeah. <laughs> like, or when her character development was that she couldn't have children. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the extent of her character development is yep. that she couldn't have kids and she was sad about it. Yeah. But like these conversations aren't new. Mm-hmm. That And that's kind of what I'm a very long winded way of saying these conversations are not new we're becoming a lot more progressive i think in just film in general Mm -hmm. um with the mcu especially like i know it it seems like kevin feige is really trying to hammer home the kinds of uh storylines that he's trying to tell and the representation that he's trying to bring to light with a lot of these characters a lot of these stories that again have already existed Mm-hmm. Some of them since the 70s, the 80s. It's it's just it's so weird <laughs> yeah. how people react because they're not new conversations. Mm-hmm. Like why do they it's have to just... make everything fam- they they've been that way since 1983? Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's <laughs> like, new to them because they've never even thought about trying to talk about these topics with other people. Yeah, but um, but yeah, it's not and, new to film either. Yeah, but in terms of um, you know, being progressive, what I've also been noticing um you know the second third time I've, I've watched these is that you know I think in the past media has kind of portrayed women as being just like one thing just one aspect you know like you said in the earlier um you know for the example of Black Widow she's just this sexy assassin essentially that was her character in the earlier uh movies but women are not just one thing we've been trying to tell you guys that for for years you know, before I was even born, before I was even thought of being born. <laughs> what I like now, and, you know, Pixar starting to do it too. I think Turning Red was a very good example. You know, women, they're funny. They're silly. We're gross. We are. If we're not seeing anyone, we know we're not going to see anyone. We're really gross. I promise. Like, <laughs> like, so, you know, there's just, you know, we have so many different facets to ourselves. And I really like seeing it you know, put on screen, you know, Jen, she's having fun. She's twerking with Megan the Stallion. She's doing weird yoga poses in front of Bruce, like her and Bruce having like burping contests. Like we do that, like that's real. It's not just to make Jen be like cooler or whatever. Like we, we do do those things. I promise. (laughs) Uh, We do. We do. (laughs) You and I, we do. Yeah, we do. But yeah, I I like the conversations that the show is having, even though they're not new. But like, I do like how it is supposed to feel meta. But you know mm-hmm. how like sometimes things are so like realistic, it it feels meta, but in like a weird way. Like this is a good way, right? Um, 
a fourth wall breaks. Oh, those have me <laughs> They're my dying. favorite. <laughs> those have me absolutely dying. The uh the <laughs> episode three, the uh the car scene where she takes her exactly. hands off the wheel and oh she goes, God. Okay, listen. So <laughs> I know this seems like it's one of those uh cameo every week kind of shows, but just a friendly reminder of whose show this actually is. That and then the <laughs> Yeah, Nikki and Pug, the connecting the A and B story. Nice. I, <laughs> I, 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 I was on the floor laughing. Speaking of cameos, actually, I just saw. I didn't watch video, but I saw. I was perusing like the the inter, mm-hmm. interwebs, whatever. There is, um, I guess, something going around that the show is relying on cameos to keep itself popular. Which, without even watching the video, I inherently disagree. But I wanted to know your thoughts on that. I think cameos add something to the show. I love cameos. I think everyone does. But I think the show would still be something without the cameos. Um, can I say something controversial? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> I actually, I don't think that it's like inherently relying on cameos. Mm-hmm. I do think because I think there's no uncertainty about how this show is going to stick that I think that was probably like a, it wasn't an afterthought. I think, I feel like it was definitely a forth, forethought mm-hmm. to have characters that, you know, grab people's attention, despite, you know, the fact that the MCU has become this, this like huge web of, of like storylines all kind of coming together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that it's the backbone of the show. I think mm-hmm. Tatiana Maslany is the backbone of the show. She is, so like, I, I think it wouldn't get as much attention. However, like, because I'm able to, and because you're able to, and a lot of people are able to look at things for what they are, mm-hmm. I think it would be able to do just fine without all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I do kind of see how it can be a bit of a, a PR move, <laughs> but it's not like a the show is only relying on cameos. No, no. <laughs> I think this is one of those shows that's like kind of trying to set a lot up for everything else as well. Yeah, um, I'm definitely seeing um, like three other future stories that are going to come like so far. But we're only three yeah. episodes in that are going to come out of this show, I think. Yeah. Um. So that's I I went through my my episode one notes. Episode two, I texted you this had my blood simmering even when I first reacted to it and it happens like it's just one right after the other I had such a hard time like formulating my thoughts as I was watching it but I literally said in my in my reaction I was like I'm gonna come back I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna write down what I think and what I think everything means and then I'm gonna word vomit it out because (laughs) I literally I showed you my notes it's just here literally like like you can't tell what it says, but there's a lot, there's a lot on here. That's episode two. There's, <laughs> there's a lot on there. There's a lot on there. And I feel like we should talk about them. So I will talk about them again. Feel free to interrupt me or say your own piece. Um, Try not to. <laughs> and I will, I will be fair in saying, I don't think my generation deals with this issue as much. I think in general, like, like later millennials, you mean? Yeah, then I'd say these issues probably pertain a bit more to them and um, probably like your friends, you know, who are, who are a bit older than us, but not, you know, our parents' age. I would say probably it also deals with them. And, you know, people my age, you know, um, early 20s could also be dealing with this. I'm not saying it's not a thing, a thing that happens. It definitely probably still is. Um, but personally, I've never dealt with it as much as I think or in the severity that um, this show depicts. But there's just like, quotes like dialogue that the characters say that I'm like it just it really molds my bread it really raisins my grapes and (laughs) really stubs your toe it really really clots Uh, my blood vessels it really 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 clots my arteries it really curdles my milk (laughs) I just wanted to go sort of through it and I, I actually wouldn't mind your opinion on them so let me know but and like I said earlier Episode two is the most heavy in like the misogyny. So like it states it, it tells you this is what we go through and then it moves on. It does move the story forward as well with Jed getting her new job and everything. 
but the issue with Jen, oh, like, like with people only wanting to know Jen because uh, she is She-Hulk. So there's a quote that Jen says, she goes, I didn't go to law school to be known, you know, only as this, as She-Hulk. So that to me is, if you look within the subtext of that, is that Jen, woman, men, whoever, people have all of these other qualities, but you are going to only notice Jen in a specific situation for a physical attribute that she happens to have. Does that make sense to you, what I just said? Yes. Okay. And a lot of the same happens at the beginning, at the beginning of episode two when they're at the bar. You know, the Jen's boss, you know, could you, you know, she's in Hulk form. She's obviously tall AF towering over. He's like, could you go back to being Jen? Subtext. Yeah. Subtext, the fact that you are taller and more muscular woman is making me uncomfortable and I would rather you be smaller. <laughs> I remember exactly what he said too. He said, can I speak to Jen? This is like actually a serious conversation as if they're not literally, mm-hmm. the, as, as if she's literally not the same person. Exactly. So Because he's towering up at her and he very obviously... <laughs> seemed uncomfortable Mm -hmm. it's giving power play (laughs) and there is this one concept took me a while to sort of write down what I wanted to say and I I I still haven't found a way to say it how I want it to but I'm I'm still gonna mention it so another quote basically is like you did the right thing but you're fired (laughs) yeah you did the right thing but we're still gonna punish you so That one kind of made me think how when, and I'm going to be saying woman because that's what these messages are supposed to relay. So when a woman will try and sort of step up, take a risk and do what they think is right, she'll say that what she did was good, but then at the end of the day, you know, she still gets punished for it. Also the fact that she can't find a job afterwards, I feel like is, you know, a lot of people and I've noticed this for in some aspects of my life. And I know my mom definitely has noticed this as well, is that some people feel insecure when they're confronted with like a confident or a powerful woman. And so therefore may not hire or may not even this also goes to like romantic relations as well. Some, not all men, some men though, don't want a confident, powerful woman to be with. Right. Um, I know plenty, I know plenty of people that would not date a woman who is older than them mm -hmm. or taller than them Mm -hmm. or more like broadly built, you know? Um, I know a couple of people who they strike for the young slim type, Mm -hmm. like, Uh, it, it's it's very much, you know, in, in light of a lot of very recent news, it's very Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just being honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I know a lot of people who don't because they can't control that. They're, they're not so much interested in like an actual level playing field kind of relationship or a thing where, where things can flip-flop. They're more interested in control and being the ideal boyfriend or husband mm-hmm. and then having them be the ideal wife or girlfriend. Yeah. Like there was, <laughs> there is, there is, I keep having, I keep getting mad. <laughs> yeah, um, well. <laughs> well, that's well, misogyny. That's misogyny for you. <laughs> Um, but as I was rewatching this episode too, I did have a thought. And so I don't know how like true this might be because Bruce Banner's Hulk is definitely more of like an alter ego than she Hulk's Hulk is. Um, but I got the sense that she Hulk literally what? Yeah. So the Hulk, you probably know this and that's also the other thing about like people getting upset that, you know, we haven't seen that, like, it's fine, but this show is about she-hulk and it kind of implies that like 
a lot of the people watching kind of already know these things from the comics like mm -hmm. they don't feel the need to spill it out for you but anyway the the Hulk backstory in the comics is like quite extensive mm -hmm. so the Hulk personality is literally like a, a form of DID right I was thinking it about is that too. completely it is a completely different self it's very similar to um Moon what Knight. we saw in Moon Knight mm -hmm. except that kind of spelled it out you know it, it came out of a lot of trauma from a lot of abuse but it's very different trauma than mm -hmm. hers mm -hmm. so not only has he been Hulk for longer she's been Hulk for like a couple of weeks canonically right yeah so he's well, been dealing with he's he's been I, I would say a couple months a couple months a couple months yeah a short it's, period of well, time anyway a, sh a relatively short period of time yeah whereas hulk has had to deal with this and have to battle with this and struggle and succeed but also fail mm -hmm. for years and years and years and years right so like a, whole, like, it, a, like a decade i think yeah yeah so when it comes to like comparing the two <laughs> in terms of trauma like you can't do that Mm -hmm. it, it, it does again you're you're comparing two completely different fruits that grow on two completely different parts of the galaxy <laughs> you know what i mean yeah like, there are aspects that are similar like they're both fruit um, <laughs> they're both fruit they're both fruit um they're quite enjoyable they have sweet taste but they taste very different they mm -hmm. grow very different they respond very differently to different climates right yeah, so definitely She-Hulk, I think, is more of a metaphor and less of, like, an alter ego. Obviously, they're very real. Like, she definitely does actually turn into the Hulk. She's a metaphor for Jen's uh, more physical, confident, and sexual self. As I said earlier, women aren't just one thing. Yes, we're also fun, silly, and gross, but, you know, sometimes we're confident in ourselves and where set and women, I know a lot of women who are sexually confident. Um, and so I think she hoped just kind of embodies that whole aspect to Jen, which I do like seeing if that is as uh, she Hulk was intended. And I think to add on to the, to comparing the time, mm -hmm. um, more back to contrasting the two in terms of time, like, so Bruce's Hulk was triggered by a specific like psychological psychological thing as well as the physical um but it's like a bit more striking if you know like it's a little more of a potent kind of thing whereas like jen's is a little bit more like spread out like it's mm -hmm. it, it wasn't like necessarily an individual it's just her being a woman it's just jen <laughs> being I, jen if, yeah if that makes any sense yeah i think i got you saying um, all right, I promise I'm almost done, but. <laughs> oh, you're good. Go for it. <laughs> I think episode two also sort of depicted a double standard that women are held to, um, specifically when she goes to dinner with her family. So Jen gets fired, obviously, uh, from this, ex I would call like extremely professional and high end job that she has. And immediately disregarding the fact that she had this job in the first place. Um, she gets fired and is immediately labeled as a disappointment. And you can tell that through, you know, the dialogue of the extended family, even her mother has with her. Um, and then we're introduced to. I hated that dinner. <laughs> and then we're introduced. I, hated the... I got secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> and then we're introduced to Ched, who. I thought it was Chad. No, it's Ched. It's Ched with it with Ched an E. With an E. Oh my God, that is so much worse. Yep. That is and... <laughs> so much worse. <laughs> I thought it was Chad. No, it's oh Ched. My God. <laughs> and he gets promoted to the manager's position um, in retail at Best at Buy. At Best Buy, which you know what? I am not hating on retail jobs. I have had retail jobs. I know they're frustrating, and you know good managers they they do a lot you know i'm not hating on that um but he gets a lot of praise for that in comparison to jen who has this lawyer's has position the as the da's like in the da's office like that is nothing to sneeze at ladies and gentlemen yale, yale law. <laughs> wasn't it yale law 
graduated. And, um, UCLA, UCLA, which is also quite still, the, still up there. Yeah. <laughs> and so just to kind of see that, like my blood was simmering <laughs> and it's kind my of Hulk like was showing my Hulk was showing my <laughs> testosterone was rising. <laughs> but also what I did notice too, is that her mother, um, you know, now that Jen isn't working sort of offered, it wasn't exactly like, like a hookup or like to meet a man romantically, but she still offered Jen's number to a man without asking Jen about it, first of all, um, which is not good in case any guys were curious about it. <laughs> um, but also telling her like to have a slim waistline, like, cause you know, Jen brought over like a pie and her mom's like, oh, you know, sugar's not good for that waistline. You know, now that Jen doesn't have this prestigious job anymore, she's depicted down to, you know, a man she may have a future with and then what her waistline looks like. And I'm like, woman, like, <laughs> like this is your Mama daughter. Chill. Mama chill. <laughs> so I do think there's a bit of like a double standard with that aspect, which happens often in a young woman's life. So like, oh, you lost your job. Well, here's something that I think is easier and more achievable for you to do. You know, find a man, have some waste. <laughs> <laughs> or rather don't i guess yeah <laughs> yeah and there is there's another Double line standard much mother. <laughs> mother. yeah and there's this this other line from i think the one of the aunts and she's like she's like a like a stylist and she's like we're gonna do your hair just like she hulks let's get your hair looking more like she hulk yeah so like there's there's this push to make a woman only one thing you know I've been saying women are not only one thing but there's a push to sort of box them in to just one aspect about themselves so uh, like why does Jen have to constantly look and be like she hulk why can't she you know why can't she be Jen Walters yeah those there, there are a lot more but honestly my wrist was starting to write and there's some fourth wall breaks in the episode that I think explain it very well um the part where Jen gets hired because of she hulk and not because of Jen Walters you know, she fourth wall breaks about that. I think it explains it pretty well. Um, but so in terms of issues, this episode two is very heavy with it. Those are what I saw. Those are what I thought that meant. Um, but yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, I did like it depicted that, you know, it definitely was, I think the theme of episode two. And then we said it, we can move on. That's how I thought about it anyway. But yeah, actually Emil Blonsky though, how do we feel about his new reformed self? Because I've been hearing a lot of similar things about, you know, smart slash Professor Hulk, that he's not as vicious as he was in the past. And that he's like also, in a sense, weaker, like, like oh, his voice is higher pitched. Okay. <laughs> Surprise, when you get older, you start shrinking. <laughs> you start shrinking and mm -hmm. you get weaker. And your voice sometimes will get a little bit lighter. It won't be as deep and bassy and manly as some of you. Just be prepared for when you turn like 60, 70, your voice is not going to be the way that it used to. I don't actually remember the, the original Hulk. I think the last time I saw it, I was like maybe 12. I mean, the, the 2006 <laughs> uh, one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't remember a whole lot about Abomination. I can recognize, though, how they are doing what they're doing with a lot of the characters. And they're not, they're a little more nuanced than just like good or bad. Mm -hmm. So the whole, you know, he was a, a decorated uh, war hero, was given this opportunity by the government, but he was kind of just a pawn. Right. You know, like the abomination made him do things that he did. It wasn't really him in there. It was abomination. And mm -hmm. so I, I think like Bruce, who's kind of having to, to battle two completely different people up here, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's very different. I actually, I like that kind of nuance. And I think it mm -hmm. poses a very interesting conversation, both in and out of universe. I did like, um, basically like what, Blonsky said that like, you know, here he is, you know, contracted by the government and he is, you know, 
you're supposed to take out a threat. And that threat at the time is, you know, Bruce Banner, who is a threat. Like we've seen that throughout, you know, the entirety of the MCU movies that he's been in, obviously in the 2006 he's destroyed movie. whole cities. Yeah, um, obviously cannot control himself, the Hulk. It does go on rampages. And then for some, actually, I, I was thinking about this. So Abomination does get obviously captured and, you know, put into prison, but then Banner walks free. I also have not seen the 2006 Hulk in a very long time. So I do kind of forget how that whole situation happened, um, where that was the outcome. I know they had a really big fight in Harlem and I know the Hulk won and then just kind of like walked away. So, so I, I do think Abomination did kind of go against like his orders in a way. And that's probably why he got locked up. I think, um, I could be totally wrong. Again, I don't really remember a lot, but yeah, I think it did pro- pose a very interesting question that one one threat gets locked up gets locked up over the other. You break the rules and become a hero. I do it. I become the enemy. That doesn't seem fair. Yeah. So I think there's this very interesting, very similar. <laughs> it's a very it's a theme. similar dialogue. <laughs> so yeah. Like, well, yeah. that seems to be the theme of a lot of Phase Four. So when people are like, "Oh, it doesn't make any like Phase Four doesn't make it," yes, it does. It's more nuanced and mm-hmm. it's done in a way that isn't as formulaic. You do have to actually do a little bit of work, mm-hmm. you know, you with your brain. Listening, <laughs> you gotta do. You gotta use a lot of these. You gotta use a lot of this. Which actually, actually, I think gives this whole superhuman law aspect now that we have um, a lot of credit because I feel like I feel like there should be something out there that determines, you know, which threat should actually be you know rehabilitated versus which one should actually be locked away just not the sokovia accords oh yeah no definitely not the sokovia accords but (laughs) um, we we don't like the sokovia accords but yeah so i think it gives a lot of credence to this should we talk about dennis Dennis. (laughs) the over exaggerated uh, sexist man (laughs) you you had texted me obviously we don't like dennis he's He's a he's a bag of he's a bag of poop. Anyway, um, you had I remember you had texted me asking me if there are men out there that actually are as over exaggerated as the character of Dennis is. I was yeah I was asking like from your personal experience, have you encountered people who are like like in person that hysterically misogynistic? Because I know like those kinds of things can like rear their head over a period of time they're not as like potent as Dennis is Mm -hmm. like I I know what he represents but yeah have you have you experienced like people not not online not through comments but like in person who comment Mm -hmm. the way that he does I'm just very (laughs) curious I don't disbelieve it I've just never seen that but I also am a man like I said I also think this is representing a bit more of a generational past because I my mom has told me stories where like I could definitely envision a man like Dennis um like you know like they exist you know and they exist today I'm quite sure of it um but I think my mom has a bit more experience than with that than I do um I have never experienced it to that level I've never been called an it and pray for the person who does because I will deck them Uh, I will come (laughs) I will come for them for you (laughs) you i appreciate or no we'll we'll team up we'll do it together yeah we'll do it stronger together together. also and i'm self-aware enough to know that that what i just did is not the most appropriate way that is not the most appropriate way to have like have situations where if you get mad try to breathe try to take yourself out of the hulk situation (laughs) but to continue answering your question (laughs) um i have had someone like I said, I used to work in retail. Um, I've had a man not want me to help him because I was a woman and therefore did not know uh, about products I was selling or whatever. So I have had that. Um, I have an internship currently and the person who's in charge of me uh, forgot my name, called me Claudia. So have also dealt with that, (laughs) Uh, which I was quick to remind him that's not in fact my name. And, you know, my name, I sign my name on the emails, you know, you should know better by now, but 
Um, so yeah, I have dealt with little things here and there, but again, not to the extent um, that is Dennis. Can we just appreciate Pug for a second though? Like a map where to- I feel like Pug and I would get along yeah. very well. Okay, that's all I really had to say in episode two. I don't know if you had anything to add to it. Uh, actually, I do have one thing to say. Okay. Um, yeah, in terms of be more like Pug, um, <laughs> as angry as people get, I do want to stress whenever we have these kinds of conversations and these discussions, it's really important for people to be self-aware. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but like if you don't understand something that's okay Mm -hmm. what gets people angry is when it's like inherently misogynistic and it's like so full frontal Mm -hmm. you know of of like a statement or an idea but yeah strive to be better there's nothing wrong with that I don't I won't get mad at people who strive to be better like I'm not gonna put any of your followers on blast um (laughs) I've had a a dialogue with one individual um and then you've had several we kind of had to talk about it because there was some dialogue that was happening that Mm -hmm. you know we weren't so sure what was being said but Mm -hmm. at the end of the day this person was genuinely confused because there is so much noise Mm -hmm. in it admittedly it can be very hard at times to form your own opinion because there's so much noise or to identify what is inherently right or wrong you know have an actual conversation an actual constructive conversation that's how you deconstruct these kinds of dangerous and harmful and uh, misogynist uh, ideologies Mm -hmm. throw that out there it's okay to ask questions just don't be an asshole yeah, I did have a very dude bro comment, which you and I both, I I think, um, tried our best. People. Tried a our couple best. People yeah, a couple people um, tried our best to put to rest. Uh, and then I had, like you said, a comment where someone did not understand. And I explained it as calmly and professionally as I possibly could. And we had a really decent conversation. He, I listened to his points, he listened to my points. Um, but I just, I don't, I just want to say that like, I know She-Hulk is so much more than like the backlash it's getting and, um, you know, the, the serious, um, talks it's having, but because everyone's bringing attention to it, you know, I just want to give my two cents on it. Um, and obviously there are nine episodes of She-Hulk. So we have definitely barely scratched the surface of, uh, you know, the actual plot to She-Hulk, I feel like, um, so, but we do get a hint at the end of episode three. So moving on to episode three of what this plot could be. And Connor, I'm just going to ask you right now, because I know there's probably a lot of also discourse on this. Um, how do you feel about the pacing and the tone? I like the lightheartedness. I like how it's taking it slow. I like that each episode is 30 minutes. It feels like a nice relaxing break to me compared to like all the other like hour long episodes that we've been getting from other MCU projects. I don't have a problem with the tone. Okay. Um, the pacing is a little weird, but it's been that way with like all these shows. Mm-hmm. Cause the thing is they're being released as if they're TV shows, but they're not. They're like six hour long films. Right. You know, as long as it comes together as the final project. And if I just want to like sit down for six hours <laughs> or, <laughs> Uh, however long this will be and just like watch it all at once or watch yeah. it in like two chunks and then to reiterate on something that you said sometimes it pays to be patient because you might be wanting to know all this other stuff and it's literally just they're waiting for you in the next episode yeah so like I think I agree with you I'm gonna wait till the whole all nine episodes come out to judge really judge it on like pacing if it paced itself well yeah like, um, I'm still able to enjoy it because i I just love her performance (laughs) yeah yeah I do enjoy the shorter episodes obviously like they they have it's easier for them to do because they have a longer you know set of time to tell the whole story whereas usually the MCU projects are around like six episodes um Mm -hmm. but the joy I get sitting down to react to this and seeing that it's like a 30 minute episode and I can I can just sit and enjoy the fact also that this doesn't take itself seriously to just you know, it's been, a, I feel like it's been a while since I've, I've just been able to sit down and, and enjoy like a TV show. 
like without feeling, you know, angsty for the next episode, without feeling angry. Obviously this has made my blood simmer many times, but you know, that's a different story. <laughs> so I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying that aspect of it. Um, I love the lightheartedness. You know, it's, it's been a couple of episodes of, of projects since I feel like we've gotten some lightheartedness. So something I find really funny. And I didn't even think about this until you mentioned it, but the showrunners of this project, they predicted the media backlash. And we see this in a little montage in episode three. Yeah. So I just think it's, I just think it's funny and a little sad at how predictable our world has become. It's very meta. Yeah. Cause they, again, these are not new kids. Cause they're not new conversations. Yeah. They're not. I was just chuckling to myself when that, when that scene came up, I was like, they, they knew, they knew I did. I did get a, uh, a couple of comments without calling out anyone and one of my reaction videos um I'm 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 still not really sure how like how they're supposed to mean um but essentially this person was very embarrassed over the uh twerking scene with Megan the stallion and she held yeah like they're like oh, I couldn't stop blushing like like in the, the way they said it made it sound like very like innocent like this is like a very innocent person who has just seen this for the first time in their life and they're they've gotten excited about it Oh. Um, and they're embarrassed about that. And I was and like, and they're probably seven, maybe respectfully. I don't know. respectfully. I did see a comment like that, but I didn't know if it was disrespectful or they were just like, really like they, they, this, this, that scene just really did something to them. Like I, <laughs> yeah. Why? And I, I know I'm, I'm feeding into my own self-awareness, but why are you mad? Why are people mad about that? I'll tell you why. People that's exactly, that. that's exactly what I want it. <laughs> to be honest yeah that's the that's making fun everything. of that's not everything but it's the more in everything and more yeah that's <laughs> that's the uh the making fun of the over over sexualization that's what that was yeah but i'll tell you what i'll tell you why people are mad people <laughs> are mad because there yes i there are some arguments about you know women say they don't, they don't want to be sexualized and then they go ahead and sexualize themselves but that is the point we are sexualizing ourselves we can be sexy. We like to be sexy. What we don't like is how you want to sexualize us. You want to degrade us into something that we're not. And there's a whole, there's whole other aspects, which I'm not going to get into too much with that. Um, Cause there are a little bit of conflicts with that, but you know, we're allowed to have fun. We're allowed to go to the club and shake our ass without you you know, thinking that we, that we want you to take us home. No, we want to dance and have fun with ourselves and our friends. Like that's what that is. That's why people are mad because we're confident enough to shake our booties. Um, and not, we're not shaking our booties for you. We're shaking our booties for us. That's what that is. I'm trying to remember. I literally watched the episode like two hours ago. I mean, the trial with Emil Blonsky is like, I'm like Emil's free now, which also sets up, I think, Thunderbolts, which possibly. possibly, cause there's a whole lot of back and forth, which confuses me cause in the comics, Abomination is part of the Thunderbolts. But then Kevin, Kevin Feige did say that we hadn't met the people in the Thunderbolt lineup yet. And I'm like, we've met four, three or four of them so far. I'm pretty sure, obviously That's can't hot. confirm, but pretty sure we've met a good chunk of the members so far. I thought we had two. So sets up future project or a part of it anyway i think um obviously disney days in like a week we'll probably find out a lot more then maybe about those these projects yeah he's free he does have an inhibitor chip now so i don't know how i don't know what his storyline will be to get out of that to be able to morph into abomination um, he so chooses because allegedly he's beyond that <laughs> right yeah so like i said these i like these three episodes I think we're more like of the social topics for discussion. Um, we only really, I think, just got into the bulk of the story towards the end of the episode when uh, we mentioned earlier, Jen gets attacked in the alley behind her apartment um, with the wrecking crew who is trying to steal her blood, which relating that back to episode one, Bruce destroyed the vials containing um, She-Hulk's blood or uh, Jen's blood. You know, he just, he's like, he's like, if one drop gets in the world, like it's, it's going to cause major issues. So who wants her blood? Who is this boss? Um, obviously answers we're probably going to get throughout the rest of the series. Why? Yeah. And why? Like, what are you trying to create? I also have some theories about that as well. 
<laughs> Spill the beans. <laughs> so I have no idea. I I I think I may be wrong. There probably is something a bit more closer to um, She Hulk's radar that that issue will be used for. But you know, with the emergence of characters like Kate Bishop, uh, America Kamala Khan, you know, these are young Avenger candidates for future young Avenger projects for in the MCU. Riri um, Williams and Ironheart. Yep, yep, that's coming out with the uh, Black Panther. So another member of this lineup is uh someone called the hulkling i think teddy is his first name yeah teddy teddy altman i think that last name might be wrong but he is essentially another version of the hulk so also sort of going in hulk is going back to sakar did he have his son as his two years of working you know of being the hulk on sakar i don't know maybe um so that could be one aspect with either Bruce or um, Jen. Another we have time to smash. He, he was on there for two years, Connor. Like he he probably did a lot. <laughs> and then I don't know how they're going to do this because I know the actor has passed away, unfortunately. But Thaddeus Ross, who is also known as Thunderbolt Ross, uh, I think in the comics turned into. Um, a red version of the Hulk. Like, I think he's called like Red Hulk or something. So blood-wise, if you're trying to create another version of the Hulk, that's what could happen. But those are my theories. Are they right? Who knows? Are they like, what's going to happen? I have no idea, but I'm excited to uh, find out. I, uh, I want all of them like now. <laughs> I know, I know. The It's hard to be patient. <laughs> <I'm running out. laughs> what did you think of like the ending ending, like the last shot of episode three? Because like, I didn't, quite get it the first time and I it hit different the second time especially listening to the song that was in the credits you mean like when she's looking at herself in the reflection um yeah that was an interesting way to end because she seems very like sad like um but seems I think powerful yes it's powerful but also like I also think it's her realizing that because this whole like those, these whole three episodes has been her trying to separate uh, or keep She-Hulk and her lawyer business separate, um, you know, and not exactly. She just wants to be a lawyer. She doesn't want to be a superior. She doesn't want to like fight the bad guys. Um, understandable. But <laughs> so I think now this is finally her realizing that she has been thrust into this situation and she is going to have to start doing something about it she literally just got attacked and I'm sure she's not dumb like I'm sure she realized that like they wanted to do that for a purpose they had these high tech weapons to try and you know defeat her so uh, I think that moment was her finally realizing that she is this powerful person and she's gonna have to sort of step up to not only be a lawyer but also sort of be a hero she hulk yeah that's what I took out of it And I think Emil Blonsky had a point too when he was like, because she was like, oh, I don't want to do, I don't want to do any interviews. And he's like, well, they're going to write stuff about you anyway. So you might as well, you know, say your stuff, you know, get yourself out. Do you want to talk about that? Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Obviously the interview, very short aspect of the episode. But when he, when the newscaster, the news anchor, whatever they're called, when he was like, so when we get back, she hulk will talk about her diet and exercise routine, her secrets. I, oh my God. Oh, he oh. asked one question, literally one question. He's like, oh, we're going to go to a break. Uh, when we come back, even though we are a news station, looked more like, like a- Like actual news. Like yeah. an MSNBC kind of channel. <laughs> right. Oh, I- Like, and- what are they doing? <laughs> oh my God. And I'm going to be honest, this was- what sparked the conversation I had with someone, the, the conversation that went well. And I will be honest, there are people out there who don't understand why that's considered bad. Uh, in my earlier years, I was also confused as to why this was considered bad. But for those who are wondering, uh, that comment and how society views that comment is essentially um, diminishing a woman to just her body and her appearance and how she looks and not like, that newscaster could have asked her what was going through her mind when she saved all those people in the courtroom, you know, anything to, you know, talk about She-Hulk's character or, you know, her thought process, what she goes, like, what's, what's it like to be 
a lawyer in the superhuman law division. No, that's not, She-Hulk isn't that important to them, but her body and her physique is. That's the, over time that question has sort of been depicted as a sexist question. So for those of you who are um, concerned, and also just another, like I am not an expert on social justice, but these are just my thoughts and opinion on that and have, and also from having done like my own research too. I also just want to put out there that as much as I think women having to slow down and, and lose all this weight for roles is bad. I also think uh, the opposite where men have to bulk up and be these rippling muscly, like muscly bodies. I don't think that's also good. You know, I think mentally that's harm. Yeah. It's not healthy mentally. That probably takes a toll on them as well. So, you know, it goes both ways. I think it's bad for both men and women in the industry and probably takes a lot of out of them. That's all I had to say on the episodes, the first three. Um, I think I, I think I'm still waiting for, you know, the plot to kick in. But like I said, you know, it's taken its time, which I don't mind. So yeah, I'm excited to see uh, what comes next for She-Hulk, for Jennifer Walters. And um, I'm very intrigued with this whole why people want her blood mystery. Yeah, this was a very social justice uh, discussion. And I think as plot moves forward, um, we'll get a bit more into, you know, the, the She-Hulk aspect of everything. So like that. I don't know. I feel like this is going to be pretty consistent. Yeah, I don't I mind if it is, I think honestly. it's a constant and it's fine. That's fine with me. Uh, I'll talk about this what... all day long. <laughs> well, guys, that has been our dyad discussion on the first three episodes of She-Hulk. Leave a like on the video, comment. What do you think about the series so far? Are you excited for its continuation? Uh, if you noticed anything that I was talking about that I did not touch upon and you want to talk about it, feel free to leave it below. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future Marvel reaction videos as well as Marvel movie reviews. But guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.